Chapter 3, we are going to study how to design a system which is based on combinational circuits. And the first part, we talk about the design procedures and the implementation technology. Any combinational circuit can be viewed as M Boolean inputs with N Boolean outputs. So each output is dependent upon all of those inputs. So we can think about we having n functions with m variables. So in general, the design procedure is the first step. We get the specification, the specification about the system we are going to design. And then based on the specification, in step two, we derive a truth table, which is a description of the system. Uh, toward the de developing the Boolean uh, equations optimized. So in uh, uh, step 3, we apply optimization tools we learned in earlier chapter using KMAP or if it's simple enough, we could use a Boolean algebra to simplify the equations. And then we finally draw the logic diagram using AND gates, OR gates, or some inverters. And then we have another step that's just called the technology mapping. So those are K-map. We got the simplified Boolean equations. So they are all based on AND circuit or OR circuit or inverters. But in actual manufacturing process, uh, the implementation technology is either NAND gate or NOR gate based ones. So we are going to convert uh, those designs with the end or gates to NAND or NOR gates only. So we are talk we are going to talk about details about this issue in later slides. And then finally we'd like to verify if the design is correct or not. So here is an example to learn the general design procedures. I suppose we are going to design BCD to access a three coder converter. The first part is we need to write specification for this system. So let's have a briefly as follows. The specification of the system we are going to design is that transforms BCD code for decimal digits to access three code for decimal digits. So input is BCD code. So we know that BCD requires four bits, but we use only from 0000 to 1001 because we are going to code decimal digits 0 through 9. And the output of the system is again 4 bits, uh, which represent excess 3 code. And then uh, we want to have uh, end gates only implementation technology. So based on this specification, next step is uh, we are going to derive a truth table. So we have uh, 4 inputs, A, B, C, D, which represent the B, C, D input, and we have uh, 4 outputs, W, X, Y, Z, which represent uh, excess 3 code. Since the B, C, D uses only 10 of those uh, possible input patterns, uh, the remaining 6 uh, will never happen in the system, so we can consider them as a uh, don't care conditions. Uh. So here is a truth table. Actually, we need one truth table for each output. Each output is one Boolean function. But here, for convenience, we combined those four tables into one because all of those four tables will share the same inputs. So we just added more columns for each output. So given 10 possible input combinations, these are the output which represent Access three code, uh, and then uh, the remaining six inputs uh, will never happen in the system. So we take we consider them as don't care conditions. Based on this truth table, we can construct a K map for W, X, Y, and Z. So we have those uh, six don't care conditions in each K map. And using those K maps, uh, finding prime implicants, essential prime implicants, and so on. We can derive the simplified equation for each output. Here is the result for that. So once we have a simplified equation is given, we can draw the circuit based on AND or, or inverters. So here we have four inputs A, B, C, D. 
which represent the PCD input, and the wave of four outputs W, X, Y, and Z, which represent accessor three code. So we have a PCD to accessor three code converter. And those circuits are based on those simplified expressions that we derived in previous uh, stage. Eh? And uh, the, the, as I told you, in actual VLSI or semiconductor manufacturing process, uh, the preferred technology is uh, NAND or NOR only circuits. Uh, so we are going to convert uh, this circuit to the implementation technology. We are going to talk about the details shortly. Here, implementation technology in a real field is mostly based on NAND only or NOR only. So why do we do that? Uh, at first, uh, it seems uh, that NAND is more complex than AND because NAND is uh, not of end. Similarly, nor is more complex than or because nor is not of or. But on the contrary, on the contrary, in CMOS manufacturing technology, NAND is simpler than end. Similarly, nor is simpler than or. Which does not make sense at the first glance, but uh, as we understand a little bit about the CMOS technology, we can understand that, that issue. So here is a very brief description of CMOS technology. So here, this is a 3D perspective view, and uh, this part uh, is a semiconductor, like a silicon or germanium. And what happens is that uh, on the semiconductor device, uh, here we put some uh, gate uh, on the top of that, and the, which is uh, insulated from the semiconductor uh, device. Uh, and on the both sides of the something called the gate, uh, we implant uh, some electrons. Uh, we diffuse electrons here. So this area we have uh, full of uh, electrons. Uh, but in between the two, it is just a pure semiconductor device. So electrically, there is no connection is made, meaning that no electrons can flow from one side of the gate to another side. But as we apply positive power on the gate, because of electrical properties, we know that positive power attracts negatively charged electrons. So Electrons are attracted uh, beneath the gate uh, because of the positive power, and then in effect we make uh, a channel of electrons uh, through the gate. So, if we apply positive power on gates, uh, we make uh, connections uh, between source and drain. But if we don't don't apply the power source and drains are disconnected. So it's a simplified the top view is like this. So here is a gate, shaded area. If you apply power, positive power, then electrically drain and source are connected. But if you don't apply power, drain and source are disconnected. That's a very simple description of a CMOS technology. Based on that, we can make a very simple NAND gate out of that. So here is a very brief description on the top view of CMOS technology. And in this part, uh, we draw output. Uh, and then A and B are inputs. Uh. So if you don't apply any power on A and B, then uh, this line is disconnected. Uh. So output is closer to high power. So we apply some high power here in the VDD. So if uh, we don't apply power on A or B, then uh, because of this line is disconnected, uh, output is uh, on high value. But if we apply power on A and B simultaneously, then connection is made here. The connection is made here as well, so the output is closer to ground, which means zero. 
So the output is a zero only if we apply power on both A and B. Otherwise, the output is a high because either one of the two is disconnected. So the truth table would be something like this. A and B we consider as input, and this is output. Then the truth table is that output is a zero only if A and B are both ones. Otherwise, output is 1, which is a description of a NAND gate. So we achieve a NAND gate with a very simple structure in CMOS technology. Similarly, we achieve a NOR gate by having parallel branch here. So again, this part is output. Then, if we don't apply power on A, or B, then this is disconnected, this is disconnected, so output is closer to high voltage. But if either one of the two, A and B, we apply power, then connection is made. So output becomes a ground, which is zero. So output is a high only if we don't apply power A or B. That if we apply power A or B, or both, uh, then output becomes a zero. So here is a truth table for that description. So output is a high only if uh, we do not apply both on A, A and B. But if power is applied either A or B or both, uh, then output becomes a zero, which is a NOR function, definition of a NOR function. So we can simply implement a NOR gate with this CMOS technology. Because of that, in actual manufacturing implementation, we prefer to have either NAND gate technology only or NOR gate technology only for implementation. So we have a mapping step there. So here we describe how to map the original circuit with AND gates or OR gates or inverters to NAND only gates. Actually, that's not complicated. What you do is replace AND and OR gates into NAND and make it logically compatible. That's the basic idea. So in, in, in your circuit, if you have an AND gate, then replace it by NAND, but logically, NAND is not of end, so if you add the inverter, then overall this is equivalent to end. If you have OR gate, you can have AND gate, a NAND gate, and have all inputs inverted. Then it's equivalent to OR. Actually, you can verify the equivalence of those two with a truth table or Boolean algebra. We did it in earlier chapter actually. And then finally, on the same line, if we have a two inverters, uh, we just uh, cancel them out. Logically, uh, not with a not is the uh, same as true form. So that's what you do. But one thing we need to be careful is that if a uh, inverter is uh, going through a branches up, uh, then have this inverter forwarded to each line so that uh, you can cancel it considering all those uh, fan out conditions. So here is an example. Suppose the simplified equation based on AND OR gates is uh, this. Uh, the technology mapping is that for each AND gate uh, convert it to NAND with inverter. In this AND gate, NAND with inverter. This AND gate, NAND with inverter. If you have OR, then NAND with the inverted inputs. So that's the first step. And second step is uh, on the same line, if you have uh, two inverters, uh, then logically we can cancel them out. So in this line, it's not connected with any other line. Very simple. So 1 and 2 cancels out. 3 and 4 cancels out. So you don't have to have that. But in this case, a 5, uh, has a fan out. So 5 is connected to both the 6 and 7, so we should move 5 after the branch and duplicate it like this. So for this line, 
5 and 6 cancels out for this line 5 and 7 cancels out so in effect those are cancelled out and the result is uh, after cancelling inverters uh, this is a uh, resulting circuit so that's a uh, completion of uh, technology mapping for NAND gates only if the implementation technology is NOR gate uh, we do very similarly replace all AND gates and OR gates with the NOR and by adding inverters make it logically equivalent uh, and then on the same line if you have uh, uh, even number of uh, inverters uh, cancel them out uh, logically so first step is uh, if you have AND gate AND gate is logically equivalent uh, NOR with uh, all inverted inputs OR gate is logically in, uh, equivalent to NOR with the inverter and then similarly as we did NAND gate uh, if uh, on the same line we have two inverters we can logically cancel them out if we have a fan out then we first move the inverter to each after the fan out point and then take care of uh, uh, cancelling uh, inverters if uh, we have uh, two of them side by uh, in a row so suppose uh, the resulting circuit is this uh, and the implementation technology is NOR only and for each end gate uh, end gate is equivalent to NOR with the inverted input end gate is uh, NOR with the inverted input and the end gate NOR with the inverted input and the OR gate is OR with a NOT once this is done if uh, on the same line if you have two inverters uh, in a row like this uh, we cancel them out uh. and this line we have only one single inverter we should keep them but here uh, we have a fan out and point X so we move uh, one after the fan out and the duplicating them so in this line one and two cancels and then one and three cancels and then this is a resulting circuit. That's how we do mapping with the NOR gates.